This is part eight of Ninja Jumper made with Pygame Zero on Moo. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the gems and then how to make the ninja interact with those gems so you get points. So let's start off by making some more variables in the top section and I'm gonna make a new little section called gems. And I'm gonna start off by making two lists that contain the X and the Y coordinates of where the gem's gonna appear or the diamond's gonna appear. I'm gonna call that diamond diamond underscore x and start a list equals square bracket and I'm going to put in the x coordinates of where the diamond would appear so 950 comma 50 comma 850 comma 150 comma 750 comma 250 650 350 and then 500 Okay, so those are the x coordinates. Uh, now I'm going to put in the y coordinates. So diamond underscore y equals square bracket. I'm going to start with 70, comma, 70, comma, 170, 170, and then 270, 270, and then 370, 370, and then 470. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a random number between 0 and 8 and I'm going to use that as the index position in these two lists to pick out the x and the y coordinates to choose the first location of the diamond or the gem. So I'm going to say d underscore x y equals random dot rand int bracket 0 8 um, and now I've used the random integer function. I need to go up to the top and add in import random. Otherwise, I'd get an error when I ran that. So there we go. And now I'm going to create that gem. So I'm going to say gem equals actor bracket. And then the file name of the, the gem, the diamond. So diamond underscore s. So that's the file name. And then I'm going to specify the x and the y coordinates of where it's first going to appear. And I'm going to use this random number and these two lists, so it's going to appear at a random location every time the game starts. I'm going to write diamond, diamond x, square bracket, d underscore x, y. So it's going to use that index position for the x coordinates. And then the same for the y coordinates, square bracket, d, x, y. Okay, close the first bracket, close the second bracket. Great. And then finally, I'm going to create a points variable. Call that zero. And those are our, all our variables created. So now I'm going to go down to the draw function. And I'm going to put in gem.draw. Okay, so let's test that. Does that work? Uh, no, because I called it gem, not gems. So just rename that gem.draw, there we go, so the gem has appeared, and if I stop that and start it again, the gem is in a new random location. Great, so whilst we are up in the draw function, we're now gonna add in the text which tells us how many points we have. So, straight beneath gem.draw, I'm gonna write screen.draw.text, bracket, and then I'm gonna write a string, loot, and then I'm going to put in the coordinates. So I'm going to write center, American spelling, equals, and the x and the y coordinates of the center of this text equals 50, 550. Make sure those are inside brackets. And then I'm going to specify the font size. Font size equals 40. Shadow, put some shadow on it. Bracket 1, 1. And then the color of the text in the American spelling equals bracket 255, 255, 255. So that's full white using RGB colors. And then I'm going to say S color equals, and then I'm going to use a hex color just to demonstrate that you can use both RGB and hex colors. So I'm going to use speech mark, hashtag 202020. 20, 20. So that's nearly black. And then 
I'm gonna close that bracket at the end. So let's just quickly test that that works. There we go, loot is in the bottom left of the corner. Okay, so now I'm just gonna copy that line and paste it and just change it ever so slightly. Rather than displaying the word loot again, I'm gonna stringify my points variable and then I'm gonna place that just beneath and move it across a little bit. So 45 and then 570 to move it down a bit. So now the points will appear in the corner. There we go, loot equals zero. If I go over the top of the gem, you can see nothing happens because I haven't added any code for that yet. And so I'm just gonna do that now. So let's stop that. And um, now we're obviously gonna go into the ninja move function and we're gonna add in another little bit of code at the bottom that detects whether the ninja has moved on top of the, uh, the diamond or the gem. So straight away, I'm gonna add those variables that I just created to the global list because we are going to be editing them inside this function. So I'm gonna add in points and then D underscore X, Y. So that's the point variable and also the new random location of that um, of the gems. So let's scroll right the way down to the bottom of that function. Okay, and I might just add in a new little section of that function, uh, gem collision, I'm gonna call it. Okay, now I'm gonna say, if ninja.collide rect, so if it collides with the gem, okay, colon, then we're gonna do something. So if we're gonna do points plus equals one. So we're gonna add on one point, okay? Um, then we're gonna pick a new location for that gem. So we're gonna say D underscore XY equals random, same line again, random dot randint zero comma eight, same as the line earlier above up above, and now we're gonna reset the position of the gem. So I'm gonna actually say gem.x equals, and then we're gonna go back to that list. So diamond underscore x, square bracket, d underscore x, y. And same with the y now. So gem.y equals diamond underscore y, square bracket, d underscore x, y. So now when we collect the gem, we should get one point and the gem should move to another location. There we go, great. Now straight away, you might have noticed that we've only picked up two gems, but the first gem I picked up, I actually got two points for it, okay? And this might happen again. There we go, it just happened again. Um, now this is because at the moment, the gem can reappear at the same locations where you already are, which is a bit uh, messy and it means you might ran you'll randomly get two points sometimes um, and also uh, the sound effects when you we do add sound effects later on they get a bit mucked up by trying to play two sound effects at the same time and it's just it's just it's just uh, not what we want to happen we want the gem to go to a new location so we're going to add in some code here to make the gem reappear at a different location now before we do that we need to take um, uh, rec just uh, take a record of where that previous gem was. So we're gonna say old underscore D underscore X, Y. So the old diamond X and Y position equals the current, what it is, so D underscore X, Y, okay? Then we're gonna set a new random position, okay? But now we're gonna say while old D, X, Y equals D, X, Y, we're gonna, we're gonna pick another position. So essentially, if the new position is different from the previous position, none of this code is gonna be run, it's just gonna be ignored. But if the new number that's picked does happen to be the same as the previous one, we're simply gonna pick another location, okay? Now, theoretically, this could go on and on and on and on for a very long time. It could keep randomly picking a, the same number that it already been picked, but it will keep inside that while loop, keep doing it over and over again until a new uh, number is picked. And only then will it move on out of this while loop to the next bit of code, which is then moving the gem. So let's just test that. Now we will just have to trust that we don't 
that it is working because obviously just by random chance it could be not working we just don't notice but I've tested this thoroughly and it yes it does work um, so as you can see now every time I pick up a gem the points only go up by one uh, because it's not using the same location again um, and the gems are always appearing in a new location the points are going up and there we go so that is essentially um, the game mechanics all finished so the videos following this will be looking at sound and other things we can do with this game all right so that was part eight of ninja jumper go and give that a go